My Overman Humanities for the Public Good internship focused on creating an interactive timeline for special collections and archives using Tom Brokaw's press passes that are in the collection he donated to the university. And yes, that Tom Brokaw. He's inspired multiple generations of future journalists, including me. In total, I cataloged over 500 individual files this summer, spanning almost seven decades. Those files became 152 events on a timeline, a timeline that includes 152 passes, 152 summaries, and 70 videos and archive photos. That timeline was market tested with journalism teachers around the country. It was shared with Brokaw himself. And in a few weeks, just before it officially goes live, it will also include audio from an interview with Brokaw himself. In 2017, Iowa Republicans passed sweeping changes to public employee labor law. The result has been a dramatic shift in the lives of the roughly 100,000 public employees here in Iowa. And while most public sector workers are all too familiar with how detrimental these changes have been for their labor unions, conveying the impact of these laws to a broader public, perhaps those in our communities who work in the private sector, and especially in non-union jobs, has posed a challenge. My name is John Tappan. I'm a PhD student in the Department of American Studies at the University of Iowa. This summer, I had the good fortune of being a Humanities for the Public Good intern through the Oberman Center for Advanced Studies. As part of my internship at the Iowa Labor Center, I assisted my supervisor, John McCurley, in producing an audio documentary podcast that seeks to explain these radical amendments to labor law and the recent attacks against public sector workers. study, you know, activism on social media. And so I feel like this is kind of an extension of that is, you know, how can we support businesses that, you know, or I guess ride the wave after 2020 and support businesses in our community. I did learn a lot, um, you know, and I got to do some group work with a lot of different people um, throughout the city. And, and I think I came up with an idea for a new business, but I won't share <laughs> <laughs> So now at the end of my internship, one of the things that I've really been feeling is that there are probably people, family, friends, and students in all of our lives who might be waiting to hear that they have an opportunity in the trade. And hearing about those opportunities from people who are connected to the university might be a great way um, to kind of lift their profile and give people a sense that it's a real choice that they have to build a good life. My work is motivated by community information needs and embodied knowledge creation in spaces like zoos, libraries, and museums. This summer, I had the unique pleasure to activate the archive of Iowa City's public access television channel, which was recently merged with Public Space One to form the Media Arts Co-op. By 2030, a short eight and a half years from today, all VHS tapes in the United States will be degraded to the point of destroyed posing both a unique and devastating ultimatum to a generation of grassroots and community media production spaces. As these VHS tapes contents degrade, what memories and content will remain? The majority of formally trained archivists and institutional collectors would frame the problem as one of preservation and digitization. How do we fast track mass accumulation and processing of these materials? Working within a small, community-based organization that proudly defines itself outside the orthodox boundaries of institutions, I ask different questions. How can these objects provide meaningful closure to a generation of community creatives? How can their life cycle foster community formation and creative inspiration in the present moment, in the future? <laughs> 